saying, I don't take sides for or against Hezbollah or for or against Israel. Mr. Speaker, a blind relativism that deliberately ignores all truth and equates merciless terrorism with free nations defending themselves and their innocent citizens is more dangerous to humanity than terrorism itself. And it is proof that liberals completely misunderstand the enemy that we face. Osama bin Laden's deputy, Al Zawahiri, made clear shortly after 9-11 in his book, Knights Under the Prophet's Banner, Al-Qaeda's most important short-term strategic goal. It is to seize control of a state or part of a state somewhere in the Muslim world. He wrote, quote, confronting the, the enemies of Islam and launching jihad against them require a Muslim authority established on Muslim land. Without achieving this, our actions will mean nothing, unquote. Mr. Speaker, such a jihadist state would be the ideal launching pad for future attacks on the West. Bin Laden himself, once again, has stated the whole world is watching this war and the two adversaries. It is either victory and glory or misery and humiliation. Mr. Speaker, the terrorists regard Iraq as the central front in this war against humanity. And if we are to understand our enemy and this war, we must understand that Iraq is the central front in our war against jihad. Our courageous and noble soldiers understand that very well, and our enemy definitely understands that. Osama bin Laden himself has said the most important and serious issue today for the world is this. This third world war, it is raging in the land of the two rivers, Iraq. The world's millstone and pillar is in Baghdad, the capital of the caliphate. Mr. Speaker, if Democrats are correct that the, the struggle in Iraq is not crucial to the winning of the war against Islamist jihad, then for God's sake, I wish they would explain that to the terrorists. Brink Lindsay has put it all so succinctly. He said, here is the grim truth. We are only one act of madness away from a social cataclysm unlike anything our country has ever known. After a handful of such acts, who knows what kind of civilizational breakdown might be in store. Mr. Speaker, we simply can no longer deny that we are fighting a war against an insidiously dangerous and evil ideology that is bent on the destruction of the Western world. And they would like nothing better than to decapitate this country by detonating a nuclear blast 100 yards from here. And to allow jihadists to declare victory in Iraq will only serve to hasten such a day. Mr. Speaker, the free nations of the world once had opportunity to address the insidious rise of the Nazi ideology in its formative years when it could have been dispatched without great cost, but they delayed. And the result was atomic bombs falling on cities, 50 million people dead worldwide, and the swastika's shadow nearly plunging this planet into Sumerian night. And Winston Churchill's words of warning far preceded such tra tragic events. He said, if you will not fight, when you can easily win without bloodshed. If you will not fight when your victory will be sure, you may come to the moment when you'll have to fight with all the odds against you and only a precarious chance of survival. There may even be a worse moment. You may have to fight when there is no hope of victory because it is still better to perish than to live as slaves. If so-called enlightened Germans fell prey to the Nazi ideology, why do we not believe that third world Muslims can also fall prey in large numbers to this jihadist ideology. History does indeed repeat itself, Mr. Speaker, and each time the price goes up. Jihadists believe they have a critical advantage over free people in the world. They believe their will is far stronger than ours and that they need only to persevere to break our resolve. Mr. Speaker, the message of this resolution has only encouraged them in that belief. So today in this chamber, we each have some grave questions to ask ourselves, and the answers will profoundly affect future American generations. We need to ask ourselves first not whether the nation should have gone to war, but whether the nation should lose this war. Will jihadists break the will of the world's free people or not? Will they be able to hide long enough to gain access to nuclear or other weapons of mass destruction? If we do allow nations like Iran to gain nuclear weapons, what will we tell our children when they face nuclear jihad, perhaps even in this generation? If liberals in this body are willing to see freedom defeated in Iraq, are they willing to take responsibility for what will almost certainly follow? If this entire nation was riveted and heartbroken when two airplanes hit two buildings in New York, how will we feel when an entire American city is in nuclear flames? 
If Speaker Pelosi and other Democrats are willing to vote against monitoring terrorist conversations on the telephone or tracking their financial tra transactions or protecting our border from terrorist insurgency or effectively interrogating terrorists in custody or sending reinforcements to our troops on the battlefield, then the question cries for an answer. What are they willing to do to defeat Islamic terrorism? What is their plan? Mr. Speaker, there is no substitute for victory. If we surrender Iraq to Islamist jihadists, we will supercharge their recruitment efforts in the Middle East and all over the planet. And our children will pay an unspeakable price. And history will condemn this generation for unspeakable irresponsibility in the face of such an obvious threat to human peace. So, Mr. Speaker, before we vote on this resolution, may we consider carefully the words of Abraham Lincoln as he sought to steal the resolve of Americans in another great and historic struggle. He said, fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. We of this Congress and this administration will be remembered in spite of ourselves. No personal significance or insignificance can spare one or another of us. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the last generation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.